Hey everybody, Puzzle Max here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Crazy 3x3 Venus. This one, much like the Mercury, has a mix of zero faces, where the inside circle here stays put when you turn the face, and one faces, where that circle moves with the turns of the face. On this one, the four faces, uh, blue, orange, green, and red are all zero faces, and white and yellow are one faces. This adds a little bit of extra challenge because you have to rotate and move the outside edges and some of the inside edges a little bit differently, but for the most part it's going to use a lot of the same moves and algorithms and three cycles that were used for Mercury and even for the standard crazy 3x3. Uh, this is also a lot of fun. Like I said, this whole series is great. If you haven't looked at them, check them out. They're tons of fun, and they all have their own little quirks and differences that make them completely unique solves. So let's get this scrambled up, and we can take a look at how to proceed solving it. Crazy 3x3 Venus, all scrambled up and ready to go. Uh, first thing you want to do here is get all of the inside edges put back where they belong. So you're going to create the crosses of inside edges on all six faces. Uh, first ones you want to start with are one of the one faces. So I'm going to start with a yellow face and just get all of those placed. A lot of these are going to fall into place intuitively and pretty easily, uh, but some you might have to use the other one face in order to rotate them and get them where you want them to go. So I'll probably get to show you that. So let's put this one just straight down here, falls right into place. And this one here falls right down. And this one here with just a left turn comes down right where it belongs. Uh, this one up here, say for example, it was sitting just up here. I can bring it straight down to here, but it's going to knock this one out of, the out of place and you'll end up with the exact same situation. So in this case, you just need to use this one face on top to bring it around to the other side so that when I do a 2R, it'll bring it down to here. There's a couple of different scenarios here where you might have to move it from this middle layer up to the top and then rotate it before you put it back down, but it's a pretty intuitive set of moves there. Um, next step is to get the down layer placed on everything around here. This is also very easy because like a couple of the other ones, these pieces can never come out of orbit. They're always in the same place relative to the other ones around. So just doing a few turns there, that one falls in, that one falls in, same here and here. And luckily enough, the top one functions the same way. So with just a few simple turns of the up and down face, you can get all of those, all of those, all of those, and all of those. So after that, you just have to use the one face on top that you haven't solved yet, and some right, left, and up moves in order to place these other outside, inside edges on the left and right of the equator back with the, the rest of these faces. Uh, once you get all of these around the equator, you'll also have the white ones solved because they won't have anywhere else to go. So it doesn't really matter where you start here. Um, I've got a blue one here. I'm just going to do a three cycle. So I'm going to move this up, bring this over to that spot, and bring it back down. So right, up inverse, right inverse. You always want to use a three cycle here so that you don't mess up the cross on the bottom that you've already done. Uh, now I've got, let's see, I've got an orange up here that I can use. I can't just move this straight up or straight down. I've got to get this orange out of the way first. So I'm just going to move that over and then do a left inverse, up inverse, left. That's in place. In doing this, you don't always need to replace the top layer here because those can't change orbit. So even just, you can freely rotate this and you're not going to mess any of those up. Um, so what do we have here? Let's see, I've got a green one up here. Um, you can be a little creative here. For example, I know I have two green pieces that need to be placed here. If I put this one up here and put the green one back down 
it's not going to give me anything new on this top face that'll help with solving the other faces. So if I can, I want to put this red one as my next piece on top. So I'm just going to get this green one out of the way, move this red one up to the top, and then replace it with the green one. So left inverse, up inverse, left. So don't have any more greens on top, so let's just keep moving around. Um, I need one more red here, and I have a red on top. So get that red out of the way. Left inverse, up inverse, left. All my reds are done. I've got another blue up here, so left inverse, up, left, up inverse. And the last green, get this out of the way. And when I replace this last green, what do you know? All of my white ones are solved, and all of the colors on the zero faces are also solved. So that's like the easiest step on here, and it's just a matter of being creative with your three cycles and making sure you don't mess up the one on the bottom that you solved first by just doing constant three cycles using this one face to move things down to the equator as you go. So next up is placing the outside edges. This first step is completely intuitive using the down, down, up, up edge piece series where you just want to place all of the ones in the equator. So all of the ones that are on adjacent zero faces. So the green, red, the red, blue, the blue, orange, and the orange, green. Um, and these are, again, very intuitive. You just have to get a little creative. Uh, so here's the red and blue. First thing I want to do is line that red up with the red center. So I just move that around using the one face. Now that red is lined up with the red center. It needs to go down here. So if I just do a down, down, up, up, because these are zero faces, it's not going to mess up your inside edges, and it placed that outside edge. Next up, I've got the orange and blue. Let's line that orange up with the orange center. Uh, while doing this, you're going to move around this uh, these inside edges on the top layer, but because they never leave orbit, they're always in the same place relative to each other, you're not going to hurt anything. So here, this orange and blue lined up with the orange center. If I go this way, obviously it's going to fix it with the green, which is not what I want. So I'm going to start here and do down, down, up, up, moving this into place first. So down, down, up, up. Orange and blue is right where it belongs now. And let's see, do I have anything else up here? I do. This uh, green and orange, it's already lined up with the green center. So same thing here, just a down, down, up, up. It's going to put that into place where it belongs. So down, down, up, up. Good to go there. Lastly, I've got the green and red that I need to place. And what do you know, I don't have that on the top face here, the white face. So first thing I'm going to do is just fix these inside edges that I've been moving around when I turn the white face. Easy, easy enough, they're in place. And since I don't have the green and red up here, chances are it's on the bottom layer somewhere. So I'm just going to turn the whole puzzle over. So yellow is my top now. And there's my green and red. I'm going to do the same thing I was doing before. I'm just going to line that red up with the red center. And down down, up, up. So fix that. Still got all of my crosses on the inside complete. And now I've got all of my outside edges on this equator taken care of as well. Uh, the next step here is to get all of the outside edge pieces on both the white and the yellow face. So top and bottom. You want all of those outside edge pieces to either have white or yellow facing up. doesn't matter which face they're on. You just want to make sure that none of them have the layers, uh, the colors from the equator layers, uh, faces, the equator faces, way harder to say than it should have been. You don't want any of the colors from the equator faces facing up on the white or yellow. So there's a couple of easy algorithms that can be used to take care of this. Uh, I'm going to show you those on a solved and mostly solved puzzle. So 
hang on one second and take a look at that. And we'll come back here and we can fix this. So a couple of handy algorithms for solving the outside edges here. When you've come to just having the outside edges on the two one faces, the white and yellow, one thing you'll have to do is rotate or flip the outside edges so that you have white and yellow facing up and down on all of them. To do this is very simple. You're going to use what I call a wide soon, where you're going to do what is pretty much pretty much your regular soon algorithm, but the first and last turns are going to be wide right turns. So if you do this, what's going to happen is this edge in the front and this edge on the right are going to flip. It's going to leave everything else oriented the same way, but it is going to move some stuff around. It's also going to screw up the corners, but we're not worried about solving those at this step. So this algorithm is just wide right, up, right inverse, up, right, up, up, and wide right inverse. And as you see, the white and blue that was here has flipped and is now on the left hand side and the white and orange that was here has flipped and is now on the front. It moved uh, moved these other ones around, but it didn't hurt anything because at this point you're just trying to orient stuff correctly. Um, so that's a good way to get everything flipped so you have the correct colors facing up and down. Uh, another helpful algorithm here is just a regular soon. If you do a soon algorithm with the zero facing front and right and a one face on top, so very similar to doing the wide soon. If you do just a regular soon algorithm, it's going to move these outside edges along with the inside edges that you've already fixed. So you can use that to rearrange things before you do that wide soon to flip things. So it's going to perform exactly like your regular soon algorithm. This orange and yellow is going to come back here. This blue and yellow is going to come over here, and this red and yellow is going to come across to here. The left-hand version does the exact opposite, uh, but it's not going to affect any of the inside edges around the puzzle. And it's just right, up, right inverse, up, right, up, up, right inverse. And there you go. The orange and yellow that was here moved back here, the blue and yellow that was here moved over to this side, and the red and yellow that was here jumped across to here. And if you do it left-hand version, left inverse, up inverse, left, up inverse, left inverse, up, up, left, it puts all those back. does affect the corners some, but again, you're not quite there yet. So those are two helpful algorithms for flipping and moving the outside edges when you're looking to get those oriented and placed properly. All right, since we know that the wide soon algorithm is going to flip two of these at once, two of the outside edges at once, we want to first just try and find two of them that are adjacent on a single face. So either a white face with two adjacent uh, outside edges that need flipped, or on the yellow face that have two adjacent outside edges that need flipped. Sadly, I don't have that situation on either one of these faces. I've got one here on the yellow face that needs to flip, and I've got one here on the white face that needs to flip. Um, this is a easy fix because when you do that wide soon, what you're actually doing is moving a zero face to the top layer before you start doing that soon algorithm. So in doing that, it's going to prevent any of the inside edges from moving during the rest of that soon algorithm until you finish off with the wide right turn to go from there. So in order to fix this, all you really need to do is move this one, this outside edge, to the top layer and then perform that wide soon the same way you would have. Uh, it doesn't matter where it's sitting or how you do it, just so long as you move it up adjacent to the other one that needs fixed. So in this case, this blue and white 
if I move it up straight from here just with a 2R, it's going to put it right next to this yellow and red that needs to flip. So I'm just going to do a 2R. That's ready to go. Now I need to move those so that they're adjacent and they are front and right so that when I do the wide soon, it's going to flip both of those. Move some other stuff, but I'm not worried about that right now. So now when I do that wide soon, all I'll have to do is remember my setup moves so that I can undo that at the end and put everything back where it belongs. So from here, it's just wide right, up, right inverse, up, right, up, up, and wide right inverse. Now you can see everything up here has yellow or white facing up. And my setup moves, I just have to remember, I turned the puzzle and I did a 2R. So now all of the colors of the outside edges on this white face are yellow or white. And same down here. All of the colors on the outside edges on this yellow face are either yellow or white. Uh, I didn't mess up any of the solved outside edges on the middle layer here. They're all still where they belong. And I didn't mess up any of the inside edges on the crosses that I'd already done. So now is another situation where you just have to take advantage of the one face, one faces and the zero faces. In this case, you need to set up a situation where you can swap the yellow face, the yellow outside edges and the white outside edges to get them all on the correct face. You don't need them in the correct place quite yet. You're just mainly concerned about putting them on the right face. So for example, this white one sitting on the yellow face obviously needs to go down here so that it's matched up with the white center. And this yellow one on the white face needs to go up here. Now, if I just turn this like that, obviously it moves that wide, um, that, that outside edge to the yellow face and it moves this white outside edge to the white face, but it also moves the inside edges all along the puzzle. And because these one faces turn those inside edges with them, I can't just do a three cycle here without messing up all of the other inside edges that are involved. So that's not going to work. However, if I do a middle turn first, doing that M turn, now I've moved a zero face to the top here. So now if I turn this top face, that inside circle stays put. So I need to take advantage of that, uh, the fact that I can do that, and just set things up so that I can do a three cycle that'll move this yellow to another yellow spot. It'll move another yellow across to this white one, and this white one will move down to the white face. So, for example, if I take this yellow one on the that's on the white face and just do a two downturn to move it all the way around the puzzle. Now, if I do a three cycle here with a right, right, and up, up, and then a right, right, it'll move this yellow one up to the top face. It'll replace it with this white one. And then when you undo the, the two R's, it'll move this white one back down to the bottom. The only thing I have to do here first is make sure I move a zero face up to the top so that when I turn the do the uh, U-turns, it doesn't mess up any of the inside edges that I need to keep solved. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just an M turn. And now I'm going to do right, right to bring that yellow one up to the top. I'm going to do a U, U to replace it with this white one. I'm going to undo this with a right, right. And then I'm going to do a U, U. Moves all of those around. And now everything's back to where it was before I did that M turn. So now I can undo that M turn just like that and then undo the 2D turn that I did at the bottom to set things up. So after that lovely little three cycle there, it's moved all of the yellow outside edges to the yellow face, and it's moved all of the white outside edges to the white face. It's never gonna be harder than that. The only thing that might be a little more difficult 
is if you have a lot of them to work with and you just have to make sure that you always move a piece from down here to this position, this piece is going to move across to this position and then whatever's here is going to come back down to the bottom. So it's, it's just a matter of paying attention to your three cycles and knowing where you move your zero face to and keeping track of that. Now from here, the next step is using a regular soon algorithm on both your white face facing up and your yellow face facing up to put the rest of the outside edges in place where they belong. First thing you want to do on either one of these faces, I'm going to use yellow as my top for now. First thing I want to do is see if any of these outside edges are already in place where they belong. And the yellow and orange here is where it belongs. It's already in place. So now either a left hand soon or a right hand soon, I should be able to do a three cycle and place the rest of these. So let's make sure that all three of them are out of place first. So this green needs to go across to here. The red needs to come over to here and the blue needs to come over to here. So if I start with that orange and yellow in the front, I can see that this is a left hand uh, soon algorithm. So I'm just gonna go left inverse, up inverse, left, up inverse, left inverse, up, up, left. And it has fixed all of the outside edges on the yellow face. So now let's flip it over and do the same thing on the white face to fix all of those. Now, I don't think I have any of the outside edges on this white face already in place. So the first thing you need to do is just see if you can put one there where it belongs. Um, if I do a regular soon from here, this green one is going to move back here, this blue and white is going to move over here, and this red and white is going to move across to here. Doesn't fix any of those. But if I do a left hand soon from here, this red and white is going to move back here, this blue and white is going to move over to here, and this green and white is going to move across to here. So let's do that, and that'll fix the red and white, or the uh, blue and white, sorry. It'll fix the blue and white over to here. So let's just do left inverse, up inverse, left, up inverse, left inverse, up, up, left. Now, after doing that, you're going to be left with one of three, uh, one of three cases. Either everything is going to be solved in place where it's supposed to be. You'll have a three cycle where one of these will be correct and the remaining three will need to cycle either clockwise or counterclockwise. And you'll just be able to use your soon algorithm to swap those around. Or you'll have a lovely parity situation, just like I do here, where this orange and white is on the red, the red and white is on the yellow, and both my blue and white and my green and white are where they belong. On a regular 3x3, three three, this is easy to fix. You just do a single U-turn, do a soon, do another U-turn, do another soon, you move things around. But because these inside edge pieces never change orbit, you can't do it that way. You have to approach this a little differently, which means you've got a parity case of sorts. The way to fix this is by doing a single turn on any one of your zero faces. So any of these faces around the equator here, and then fixing the inside edges with an even number of turns. This is exactly like it was on the Mercury puzzle, and it's it's a pretty common common thing here, and it's very easy to fix once you see what you're doing and kind of take note of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just do a single uh, single L turn uh, on this face here. Now I need to put this white back up here, red here, yellow here, orange here. I can't just obviously do that because it's what I'm trying to fix, and I need to repair these with an even number of turns. So the first thing I'm going to do is repair this white by moving this uh, by moving this other white piece across to here and moving this red down to here. So if I just do a 2U and then I'm going to do a 
left inverse, up, up, left. That fixed all of my white ones. And now if I flip the whole puzzle over, putting yellow on top, I've got three here that need to swap. This yellow needs to go here, this orange needs to go here, and this red needs to go over here. I can, I can fix this with an even number of turns and all at once, just with a few setup moves here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do an M inverse, or an M slice rather, to bring a one face up to the back here so that I can rotate and move this red inside edge to this side. So if I just do that and then do a 180 degree turn on this white face, and now I'm going to do a wide R inverse to bring that red one up to the top. So even though things have, look a little different now, I know that this yellow one needs to go here, this orange one needs to go here, and this red one needs to go here. So with a regular three cycle and then undoing those setup moves, it'll replace everything where it needs to go. So if I just do left inverse, up, up, left, up, up, and then do a wide right, do a back back, and then undo that middle slice that I did. It has put everything back where it was. If I flip the puzzle over, you can now see that on this white face, I've got a three cycle. Well, I've got a two two cycles, which equals a three cycle once you fix one thing, but it didn't mess up any of the other outside edges that I'd already taken care of. So now I'm back to just where I was before, moving these outside edges on this white face to where they belong. So I'm going to do a regular soon here. It's going to move this red and white back here. It's going to move this blue and white over here. And it's going to move this orange white across here, putting the orange white where it belongs. So just a regular soon. So now that orange and white is correct. Put that in the front. I know that this red and white needs to go back here. And these two need to cycle as well. So if I just do a regular soon algorithm from here. Now that orange and white is still in place. The green and white is where it belongs. The red and white and the blue and white are also where they belong. And everything else is done. So now all of the inside edges and outside edges are complete on all six faces. Uh, the next step is going to be placing these inside corner pieces, these little triangles on each face. This step is very easy, but there's just lots to do. So it is a bit time consuming, but it's not really a difficult step. So hang on one second. We'll take a look at that. Next up, we get to fix these little triangles, the inside corner pieces. These are pretty straightforward. They use the same three cycle commutator that was used for the, um, those pieces on the Mercury. Uh, I actually find this one a little easier because you've got a zero, uh, one face on top and a one face on bottom. So you have two options of pieces you can, of faces you can use to cycle those pieces. Um, Let's find a good place to start. Uh, this green works. So first thing you want to do is make sure that your one faces are on top and bottom. And what this three cycle is going to do is it's going to move this piece or this piece. So this one, for example, it's going to move this one down to the bottom directly under it. It's going to move this piece to another one of these positions. And then whatever is in those positions is going to come up to here. So for example, this yellow one is going to come down here to the yellow face. This green one is going to move across to this green one, and this green one is going to come up to here. Uh, it's a very easy three cycle, it just uses a edge piece series, a, a middle move, and then undoing that edge piece series. So what I'm going to do here is down, down, up, up. That's going to move that yellow piece that was up here down to the bottom. Then I'm going to put the piece that I want to come up here directly underneath the position it needs to go. So down, down, down here. And then I'm going to move undo that uh, 
edge piece series that I did. So I started on the left last time. This time I'm going to start on the right. So down, down, up, up, and then undo the moves that I did on the bottom to move pieces around. And now that green is where I want it to go. It also moves some of the outside corner pieces, but we're not worried about those until the end, so they don't matter. Main focus here is just getting these inside triangles, the uh, inside corner pieces taken care of. So another one here, this red is going to go down to here, and this red is going to come down to here, and this green is going to come up to here. Same thing, but this time I'm going to start on the right so that that piece that I want to fix moves down to the bottom. So it's going to be down, down, up, up. I'm going to move this green one directly under the position I want it to go in, and then undo that first three cycle that I did, that edge piece series. And it really is that simple. So the first thing I'm going to try and do is get all of the inside triangles on this top layer here. So I've got all of the green ones. Let's see, I have two red ones down here, which means I can fix both of these. So I'm do the same thing. It doesn't matter which one I use. It's going to move both of these, but it's only going to put one onto a new face. So I'm going to start with this orange one. Down, down, up, up. Move this new one underneath the position I want it to go, and then undo that three cycle. Down, down, up, up. And then just undo that move to put the bottom layer back where it belongs. As long as you undo, as long as you do and undo the edge piece series correctly, you're not going to move. Uh, you're not going to mess up any of the outside edges that you've already fixed. Uh, for this one, you need to do a little bit of a setup move since this red piece that I want to go up here is directly under where I want it to go. If I start with it in that position, it's not going to be. I'm not going to be able to move it from here to here. So I just need to move this out of the way first, so in either direction. And now I'm going to do that same edge piece series and middle cycle that I was doing. So down, down, up, up. Started on the right. Move that red one directly under where I want it to go. Since I started on the right last time, I'm going to start on the left this time. And down, down, up, up. Now that's all done. Now we've got blue here. Let's see. I don't have any blue triangles down here on this yellow face. So let's just skip that for now. See if I can fix something else. This orange, I've got one orange piece that I need to fix. So let's see if I have an orange down here on the yellow. I do. So I can do that same three cycle. So down, down, up, up. Bring in this orange. Place it underneath where I want it to go. And down, down up, up, and then just undo those down turns that I did. Those are all done. The greens are good. The reds are good. These two blues, I don't have either one of those in place, and I don't have any blue pieces down here. Here's where you have to get creative and take advantage of the zero faces that you have surrounding the puzzle. So up here on this white face, I have a blue piece that I can move down to the bottom with a, just some uh, turns on the right. If I move these straight down to the bottom, I know I can do that same series without messing up anything that's already fixed. So this yellow piece, I'm not worried about yet. And I know that I can move this white one down here. This yellow one will come across to here. And this blue one will come up to here. I just have to remember to undo the setup move at the end. So same thing. I'm just going to go down, down, up, up. Move this blue one underneath where it needs to go. And undo those down, down, up, ups. Now here I need to undo this turn I did on the bottom layer. And then undo my setup move, which was two rights. So I've got one of those blue ones in place. I have one more blue one that I need to fix. Here's a great example. Because I can do, I can use <clears throat> these zero faces without messing up anything in the circle. I can put this blue one on this bottom face with just a turn of the front layer, a turn of that blue face. But I have to be careful now because if I do the three cycle from this position, it's going to move this green one to this orange one. And I know from before I did that setup move that that orange one was already correct. So I don't want to use that in the three cycle. So I'm going to put that on the bottom just like I did. 
but now I'm going to get this section out of the way so that I can use a piece down here from the yellow face that I'm not worried about yet. So I'm just going to turn this bottom layer down like that. Now I'm going to do the three cycle the same way I've been doing. Down, down, up, up, and bring this blue one around to here and undo that edge piece series that I did. Place that blue. Now I just have to make sure that I undo everything in the right positions in the right order. So I have to put that blue back lined up with the blue and then I can undo the turn that I did on the front face. And that'll put all of those orange ones back where they started and all of these red ones back where they started. And now all of that's fine. All of that's done. All of that's done. All of that's done. Now, being that I have a one face on the top and a one face on the bottom, in order to fix these down here on the bottom, I don't have to worry about doing creative setup moves or anything. I can just turn the puzzle over and do the same thing that I was doing, but now I'm using the white face as my bottom. So here I've got an orange one down here on the white face, so I can take this yellow one, bring it down here, this white one will come across to here, and this orange one will come up to here. So down, down, up, up, bring this orange one around, and undo. So down, down, up, up, starting on the left that time, and then bring this, uh, this down face back around. So all of my orange is done. Now here, I don't have anything down here on this white face that needs to go on any of these surrounding faces. So there's a couple of ways to approach this. Um, first, up here on the yellow face, I see that I've got red and green, both of which I need. So let's see which one I can use easiest. If I turn this back face uh, opposite the red face, I can put this red piece down on the bottom in a spot that I can use. So I'm just gonna turn that twice and that puts that red piece down here on the bottom in a spot I can use. And now I can bring either one of these red pieces down and work with those. So I'm gonna start here, move the green one down here. This white one's gonna come across and this red one's gonna come up here. So down, down, up, up. Bring this red one around twice underneath where I want it to go and undo that edge piece series. And then make sure that I undo these bottom turns that I did, double check everything, and then undo the turns on the back that I did as well. So everything down here on this bottom section is still correct. And let's see, now I have a green one down here on the bottom that I can use. So another spot we're getting creative with which ones you take out, which ones you use. Um, I can do it with either one of these. But if I do it with this yellow one, it's not going to put anything new down on this white face that I can use. If I use this red one, it's going to put this red down here, this yellow is going to come across, and this green will come up here. So I'll have this red piece down on the white face, which means I'll be able to use it again. So let's start there. Let's go with this red one. Down, down, up, up. Bring this green one around underneath where I want it to go and then undo those moves and then undo my turns that I did on the bottom. Next up, I've got this red one down here on the white face. I can put it here, bringing a blue one down that I'll be able to use. So let's go down, down, up, up. Bring this red one underneath where I want it to go and undo fixed all of that, undo that bottom turn that I did. Now I've got a blue one down here on the white face that I can put here. So same thing, just gonna go down, down, up, up. Brought that yellow one down to here. I'm gonna bring this blue one around underneath where I need it to go and undo those down, down, up, ups from the edge piece series. All that's good to go. And then just undo these turns that I did on the bottom. Now I don't have anything else down here that I can use. My red is a complete, my blue is complete, my orange is complete. My green, however, I still have one that needs to be fixed. This is another situation like I had before where I have a green one up here on the top 
and I can bring it down to the bottom by just turning this front face twice. Doesn't move the green any, so I still have that piece where I need it to go. And here I just need to do a setup move. Uh, down here, I'm not worried about any of these pieces, so I can move this either direction just to get it out of the way for now. So now this yellow one is going to come down here, this white one is going to come across to here, and this green one is going to come up to here. So down, down, up, up, bring the green one over, and undo those. And now make sure everything's lined up correctly so that when I undo the two front turns that I did for setup, it puts everything back where it needs to go. And now I've got all of my green, all of my orange, all of my blue, and all of my red in place. For this next step, you want to fix everything on the yellow face and everything on the white face. This part, you got to get a little creative, but it works the same way. But instead of being able to do turns directly from yellow on front, because I can't turn this face and move any of those corners, I've got to turn whatever I'm looking to fix from the yellow face down one so that it's on a zero face and it still leaves a one face on the bottom that I can use. But again, I've got to be really careful now to not mess up whatever colors I put down here that I've already fixed on these other faces. So for here, I need to move this red out of the way so that I can put this white down onto a white piece and move this yellow one up to this yellow part where I need it to go. So I'm just going to do a double turn down here on the bottom to start and then same thing. This white's going to come here, this white's going to move across to here, and this yellow is going to come up to here. So down, down, up, up, move this yellow over to here, and undo those moves. Now I just need to make sure to put my bottom layer back where I need it to go before I undo the main setup move that I did, so that when I undo that, it fixes my red. Um, same thing, I'm just going to repeat with on this side. Now this white one, I need to put down here, bring one of these yellow ones up to that position. Doesn't matter which one, I just need to get this red out of the way first. So move that out of the way. Now do the same series. Down, down, up, up. Bring this yellow one over. And undo. Down, down, up, up. Now, repair what I was working with there so that this red is going to come back up here and fix this. Bring that yellow one back up, and you're good to go. Now, from here, if I bring this white one down to this face, it's going to be on the bottom, so not in a spot I, I can use. So if I just turn the puzzle so that I can bring this white one to the green face, now I can bring this white one down to this white face, just making sure that I don't bring it into either one of these green spots, and then I can bring this yellow one up here. So this last last one is going to bring this white one down here, this white one across to here, and this yellow one is going to jump up to there. So down, down, up, up. Bring this yellow one underneath where I want it to go. Down, down, up, up. And now I just have to undo my setup moves. So now I know this whole section of green is going to come back up here undo that left turn that I did, and now all six faces, the inside circles, are complete. The final step is just fixing all of the outside corners, and that's not terribly difficult, but it is just, there's a couple more things you need to pay attention to so that you don't mess up any of the inside pieces that you've already fixed. So hang on one second, and this will be the last step. And we're almost done. Last thing to do is to place these outside corner pieces. And for this, I'm going to use my corner piece series that's going to move this piece to here, this piece to here, and this piece back to here. Only I have to be careful that I keep the one faces as my front and back because I want to make sure that I'm only turning zero faces. So I want my right face to be a zero face, I want my up face to be a zero face and I want my left face to be a zero face. That's going to be key because if you involve a one face during any of these moves and algorithms, you run the risk of also messing up the inside pieces that you've already solved. So 
it doesn't matter where you start here so long as you have your one faces as the front and back. For here, I'm, I've got green on top. So my main goal here is to place all of the blue edges or corners rather, the blue outside corners. So any of the outside corners that have blue involved, I wanna place those. So here I've got the red, blue, and yellow. Let's see where that goes. I know that it goes back here. First thing I'm gonna do is put it over top of where it needs to go and then bring this corner piece, the one that I'm trying to fix, up to this green layer. So I'm gonna bring it up with a left turn. So now if I look here, if I do the left hand corner piece series, it's gonna bring this piece back to here with red facing back, which is not what I want. I wanna get blue facing back here if I can. Not necessary, you can reorient these later, but I like trying to fix the orientation on these bottom pieces as I go. So let's undo that for a second and see what happens here. So now if I put this blue, red, and yellow corner piece here and do a left turn to bring that position up onto the green face, now I can see that if I do a double left turn with this corner piece series, this blue is gonna come all the way back to here with blue facing where it needs to be. So that's how I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna bring this blue all the way up to here this piece is going to come across to here, and this piece is going to come down to here with what I start. Because I'm only worried about fixing this one piece at a time, I'm not too concerned with messing anything else up right now. So this one is just left, left, up, right, up inverse, left, left, up, right inverse, up inverse. And now I just need to undo that setup move that I did to bring this position up. As you can see, it's fixed that. So I just need to move this back to where it belongs on the puzzle. So just undo that setup move. And in doing that, I also brought another blue piece up to the top. So benefit there. So for this one, let's see what we've got. This is the blue, white, and orange piece. So that needs to go here. So I'm going to put the yellow face in the front, that's my one face, so that I can easily bring this piece up to the top layer, this position up to the top face. So first thing I'm gonna do is take this piece, the blue, white, and orange, and place it over top of the position it needs to go in. So that's where it needs to go. And then I'm gonna bring the position up to the top face. And then I'm just going to have a look here. So now if I do the left hand corner piece series, it's going to bring this one back here with this blue facing the back, which is how I want it to end up. So this works. So from here, I'm just going to do left inverse, up, right, up inverse, left, up, right inverse, up inverse. And you can see that it's placed that blue, white, and orange amongst the edge and the other pieces so that when I undo this setup move that I did, it puts it back where it belongs. So now I've got this orange, blue, and yellow on the top here. That needs to go back here. So I'm gonna put white as my front so that I can bring that position up. So that's the position I want this blue, orange, and yellow to go. If I put this directly over top of that position and then bring the position up to the top face, I can see that when I do the right hand corner piece series, orange is gonna to go to the back, which is not where I want it to line up. I want blue back here. So this is another situation where if I put this here and then bring this position up to the top, now if I do that corner piece series with a double right turn, it's gonna bring this piece back here with the blue facing the back. So just like that, where I want it to go. So this one is just right, right, up inverse, left inverse, up, right, right, inverse, up inverse, left, up. And then undo that setup move and that blue, orange, and yellow piece is now where it belongs. So there's only one piece down here on the blue face that isn't in place yet. And that is the blue, red, and white. So now I've still got a one face as my front and back, very key thing here. 
I'm going to put this over top of the position it needs to go into. And then I'm going to bring this position up to the top face. And just look at what might happen here. If I do my corner piece series from here, this blue is going to go to the back, which is where I want it to go. So for this, it's just going to be right, up inverse, left inverse, up, right inverse, up inverse, left, up. And then undo that setup move. And now you can see that all of the blue corner pieces have been correctly placed on this bottom face. Now comes the time to fix the green corner pieces. Uh, first thing you want to do is just look for one that's already in the correct spot. You're not worried about orientation right now. That's going to be fixed at the very end. So this green, red, and white piece is in the correct place. It's just not, <clears throat> just not oriented correctly. Excuse me. Um, so let's see here. How can we use that corner piece series that we've been using to put these other three in place? Well, this orange, green, and yellow needs to go back here. So if I move this here, then this green, red, and yellow is going to come over to here. And this green, orange, and white is going to jump down to here. So that'll put all three of those where they belong. So I'm just going to do right, up inverse, left, up, right inverse, up inverse, left, up. And now I just have to see what I have left. Again, still keeping my ones as the front and back face. Um, in this case, I've got a piece here in the correct place that needs to rotate clockwise and a piece here in the correct position that needs to rotate counterclockwise. So if I put my one face as the front and the back, so the yellow face here, I can see that this piece needs to rotate counterclockwise. And I know that if I do the soon algorithm followed by the anti-soon algorithm or the left-hand soon algorithm, it'll rotate this piece counterclockwise and this piece clockwise. So just a quick setup move. I can bring this piece over here. And as long as I use all zero faces for these, uh, these two algorithms, then it's not going to move any of the inside corner pieces. It's just going to rotate the outside corner that's here and the outside corner that's here. So if I just go right, up, right inverse, up, right, up, up, right inverse, and then left inverse, up inverse, left, up inverse, left inverse, up, up, left, and then undo the setup move. It's rotated that, it's rotated that, and everything is back where it belongs. So there you have it, the 3x3 three three Crazy Venus Puzzle. This one is a lot of fun. I hope this was helpful, and as always, happy solving. <laughs>